Lord, it's been tough. It's been rough. Lord, I've been going through trials and tribulations, but I believe today that all changes in Jesus' name. But God, I want to prepare my heart right now, right now, as we continue to lift up our voice in prayer. Come on, church. Lord, forgive me. God, of anything that you see that's unclean, that you see that's unfit, Lord, examine my heart. God, examine my mind, my body, Jesus. Lord, right now, I deny myself. I take up my cross and I follow you, Jesus. Whatever you want to do in my life, change me today. Whatever, God, you want to change in me, do it, God. Tell me, Jesus. Tell me, Jesus. Lord, look at me. Look at my family. Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God, help me to forgive others today. Lord, here's what I have going on right now. This is what I need changed in my life today. Lord, I want to move. Lord, I want to move today. I believe that every service is a new chance for something to change in my life. In the name of Jesus, not my will. Pray this prayer today, church. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, I must decrease for you to increase. Right now, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, fill me with a fresh anointing of your Spirit, O God. Jesus, move upon my life. Fill my heart with love. Put on the mind of Christ today. Fill my body with strength today in Jesus' name. Lord, help me to make a difference. Help me to be selfless today. To help others. To help others draw nigh unto you. And right now, we're drawing nigh unto God that He might draw nigh unto us. Right now, something great is going to happen in this place today. I speak victory in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak joy in the name of Jesus. I speak, if you need the Prince of Peace today, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation in Jesus' name. I speak peace. I speak love in this house. I speak love in this house right now for the next minute and a half. Right now, if we can give God a shout of praise where two or three are gathered in my name, there he is, he said, in the midst. I believe there are more than two or three people in this place. There's a whole congregation of people that want to give God praise today. I believe in greater things for my family. Today I pray birthing, I pray blessing, I pray protection, I pray provision for my family and I today in Jesus' name. Lord, I give you glory. Come on, church, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. There's something special about our worship, about our praise unto God. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want more of you. God, I give you my whole life. Every part of who I am, my family belongs to you. My career belongs to you. Jesus, my whole life belongs to you. Take back my heart. Take back my mind. Take back my body in the name of Jesus. Now everybody, if we can clap our hands, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on. Come on. Let it come from your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In the name of Jesus, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus, as our worship team begins to come. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. In the name of Jesus, let's give God our best today in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody, clap your hands right now to the Lord. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, Lord, you've made me glad. Hallelujah. Oh, is there anybody with gladness in your heart today? Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, we worship you today, God. Your love in the morning. 
hands right now all over this room. Lord, we worship you, God. God, we know anything can happen when you step into the room. Hallelujah. Move right now in this place, Lord. demonstration of your power. We want more than sorry. We're declaring and believing for it now. The atmosphere so we can be welcome here.
Hallelujah, God. Oh, amen. This atmosphere right now, God can step in and do anything. I'd like to have our elders make their way. This is a time for prayer right now. If you need prayer today, please step forward. Come up to these ministers. They're going to lay their hands on you and pray with you today. God, and I believe that anything can happen.
let's raise our hands all over this room right now. Oh, God, we welcome you, Lord. Lord, don't pass me by. Just reach out and touch the Lord. Lord, we love you, Jesus. I worship you, Almighty God. God, where would I be without you, Lord, today? Oh, I remember, God, when you reached into my life and you changed it. Can you sing that with us? Jesus. Jesus, you change everything. 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 Jesus, Jesus, you don't have to wait another minute or another day. Whatever you need is in this room. If you just call upon the name of the Lord, God, I need you right now. Let your Holy Ghost come down into this room. God, touch every heart and every mind. He sees the need in your life today. Oh, he's able. There's 200 people in this room. He's able to look at each person and know exactly what you need. Lord, you know what I need today, and I need you to touch my heart and my mind. Let your glory, show me your glory right now. Reveal it unto me. Oh, I don't want to leave this place the same way that I walked in, but change my heart, change my mind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're so happy that you're all in church today. Are you happy to be here? Amen. As you are returning to your seats, let's have our ushers make their way this morning. We will receive this morning's tithe and offering. Amen. And be obedient in our giving today for the word of God. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all that you've done so far in this service. And I pray right now that you bless this tithe and offering. Use it for the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give unto the Lord today with a grace.
welcome our pastor today as he brings the word of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Around here, if you haven't been around here very long, our greeting is praise the Lord. And uh, it's nice to say hello, but it's nice to praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to have you here, all guests and visitors. Thank you for being here with us at the Temple of Sydney. We're honored that you've come to worship the Lord with us today. Amen. A little while later, we have a baptism today. Amen. God is going to do something amazing in this service with your life and mine. I'm just glad to be here. Amen. God is awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why don't you take a minute, greet a neighbor, shake somebody's hand, tell them hi. Tell them praise the Lord. <laughs> So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. How many are going to be watching the eclipse tomorrow? <laughs> Might be a good time to take a nap <laughs> for four minutes. <laughs> if you weren't here Wednesday, you might want to go listen to the message from Wednesday about warning signs. Man, God is very prevalent and speaking very loudly to our last this last generation and he wants us to understand the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man will come back to earth but he said you will know the signs and the seasons so it's very important that we understand like John said in Revelation several times let him that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches I want to know what God's telling me Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, would you turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 12. I'm going to read one verse, verse number 12. Thank you for standing. I know you've been standing a long time. We appreciate it so much, standing for the reading of the Word. And uh, we're just, we anticipate what God is going to do in the lives. I believe God can give somebody a miracle today. I believe He already has. Amen. I believe God wants to touch somebody's life and change the direction of where they're going and what's happening. Amen. Revelation chapter 12, one verse, verse number 12. Pastor Martin, if you'd read that for us. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The devil has come down having great wrath because he knows his time is short. I want to talk to you on this subject today. The king has one more move. The king has one more move. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we love you. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would come down and you would minister in every area and avenue, God. 
in myself I'm incapable, Lord, but with your anointing on these lips of clay, God, you can begin through the word of God to pierce even the heart, the soul, dividing the bone, the joint, the marrow. So I pray, God, that your word would now go down into the very private life of individuals and begin to speak into their situation the word of faith right now. We believe and we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, tell your neighbor the king has one more move. God bless you. You can be seated. In my studies this week, I I uh, stumbled across a painting as as when preachers study, the Lord just kind of directs certain things. And this painting here was of two men. I want to tell you the story. Two men were walking through an art gallery admiring a famous painting by Friedrich Moritz August Reitz called Checkmate. This painting was on exhibit for many years. It has only now been purchased through a private person and now to, on a private location in 1999. But in the painting, a man is playing chess with the devil. The devil is on your left. And he's playing chess with the devil. And as I said, it is called checkmate. The devil is grinning because he has the man cornered. Indicates, checkmate indicates that the game is now over. The devil has won and his opponent has no more moves. But these two men that were staring at the painting, the first man looking at the painting many years ago, he wants to move on to the other paintings throughout the art gallery. But the second man, an international chess champion, wants to look at and observe the painting for longer. So he waves his friend on and tells him, man, I'll catch up with you later. This chess champion stares and stares at this chessboard on this painting for many, many hours. Then suddenly he steps back flabbergasted and says, it's wrong. He says, this is all wrong. He runs to his friend and, and they come back together to the painting. He said, we have to contact the painter. It's not checkmate. The king has one more move. I want that to sink in for a moment because it is the devil's ability to make every person in life feel like that they're in checkmate. But I've come to remind God's people that the king still has one more move. Right here in the book of Revelation, there's a lot of back and forth going on from, from John. He's speaking of future events, and then he lays out past events. In Revelation, we're given a pre-Genesis happening. Pastor, if you could read Revelation 12, 7 through 11. I, I may stop you from time to time because I want you to see what's happening here. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. What we're seeing right now is what Jesus talked about. I beheld Satan fall from heaven as of lightning. He fell down to the earth. Go ahead, Pastor. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. One third of all the angels were cast out with him. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. He's speaking of past time and now he's speaking of future times. Go ahead, Pastor. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. See, even from the beginning of time when, when the devil and his angels were cast out of heaven, God was already prophetically saying that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. God was already setting in, in, in place 
a way by which people would not have to fall to the whims of the devil. He was setting in place the fact that the devil might have influence around us and he's got influence in the earth but God said I'm going to make a way so that every person no matter who they are will not be deceived by the devil and the devil will never be able to take them down so long as they choose not to hold on the devil you and I know has influence in in all the world around us He's here in this world with an evil agenda that is conspiring against not only God, but against the church. I was reading an article yesterday on Fox News about a woman who's 28 years old, a Dutch woman in the Netherlands. She has decided to be euthanized. 28 years old, and of course in that country, they allow euthanasia. And she decided because she's been dealing with depression her entire life. She's got a boyfriend. She's got a somewhat normal life. But she has decided that it's life is not worth living anymore. And so she's decided next month that she's going to take her own life. To which she says the doctors will calmly get her a cup of coffee and will calmly talk to her and ease her and put her in a right frame of mind. And then they'll sedate her a little bit and then they'll allow her to drift out into eternity the doctors say that they, they will tell her at that time just have safe travels but this woman said in the article she said in my case uh, they they would say they would say have a good nap but because she would say i'm not going anywhere she does not believe that there's anything beyond her life and her dilemma and her eternity she believes that everything is going to stop the moment that she draws her last breath and then her torment will be over but later in the article after she said i believe i'm not going anywhere then she says this I i'm a little afraid of dying because it's the ultimate unknown she said we don't really know what's next or is there nothing that's a very scary Part. I want you to understand that the devil has set her down at a chessboard and basically told her that this is checkmate and that your life is never going to be anything better because this is the world in which the devil has set the climate and the atmosphere. But I promise you this, if we, if somebody, I, and I'm really serious about writing this woman a letter myself, if somebody would just begin to talk to her about the king, the king has one more move for this young woman. Her life has barely gotten started. I've come to preach to somebody in this sanctuary today. The devil wants to feed you a bill of goods, but the king is alive and ready to give you one more move that can change your entire life. All over this sanctuary are people that the devil sat down at a chessboard and he looked at them and said, I've got checkmate. But they stumbled into an old Pentecostal church and they stumbled into the house of God and they found something that was worth living for. They found the king. And I'm not trying to be controversial, however, the abortion talk is back. And how many weeks should, should there be a cutoff for abortion? Can I remind you, and this is all I'm going to say about it, that mankind is the only thing in creation that God himself formed with his own hands hands so within the womb of every expecting mother is a person that has been fashioned personally by the master and the king of kings ladies and gentlemen we live in a wicked world but the king has one more move Pharaoh and Moses were entangled in a great chess match. I thought it was cool. Colton said, I, I, know, how, I know how to do chess. I know how to set the board up. I, I think that's cool. I used to know how to play chess. Now if I pull the chess board out, I just play checkers with them. <laughs> it's much easier for my brain. But Pharaoh and Moses were entangled in a great chess match. As Pharaoh moved his pieces on the board, it was the devil orchestrating it and using Pharaoh as a puppet. I just want to talk to you today. Is that okay? The Lord at every counter began begin to turn up the heat on, on the contest. 
the children of Israel are now, after they've walked out of Egypt, they're now at the Red Sea, and they can't cross the water, and they can't go back because now Pharaoh and his army are right behind them, pursuing them, ready to slay each and every last child of God. I can hear as I read through the pages of the word, the words that are, that are engrafted within the, 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 the sentences and the phrases there. I can hear the devil within the pages of God's word gleefully saying as he approaches God's people from behind at the Red Sea, it's checkmate. Pastor, can you read Exodus 14 verse number 10? And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. <laughs> Woo. They, the devil had them in checkmate, or so they thought. You can't go back because the, the Egyptians, uh, they are now on hot pursuit to kill you. And you can't go forward in a Red Sea that's over drowning. You can't go anywhere. The devil is screaming, checkmate! Checkmate, checkmate, as he sits back in his chair with a sinister grin. But hold on a second, devil. The king has one more move. Moses stretches out his rod over the Red Sea, and the Bible says one side and the other begin to stand up on itself, and the children of Israel walk through on dry ground. But if that wasn't enough, Pharaoh's army went into the Red Sea, and the word of God said it's done, and finished off the entire army. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not over till the king says it's over and the king has one more move oh I've come to increase somebody's faith today you might be facing an adverse situation but the king stands poised and ready to make the move <laughs> little David steps out on a battlefield to face the giant a seasoned champion of war Goliath David is nothing more than a mere shepherd. The mockery of the devil comes out of Goliath's mouth. Watch this, 1 Samuel 17, 43 and 44. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? He's laughing at him. That thou comest to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Checkmate. Your life is over, David. But hold on a minute, Goliath. Wait just a moment, devil. The king has one more move. Can I encourage you for a moment? I know it's an old story. But he used one small stone to do what an entire, entire army could not do. You see, ladies and gentlemen, as long as the king is in control, he's always got one more move. The devil can never have the last move, but it's God that's got the last move. It's the king that's got the last move. Can you put that picture back up for me, please? I want you to see this etched in your brain because there, there's, a, there's an enemy that's trying to tell you that you are all concerned and you're discouraged and you're depressed. Uh, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I've come to remind you that Jesus has the last say on everything. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, he is the first and the last, uh, the beginning and the end. He which was and is and is to come. The king has one more move. He specializes in one more move. He always has one, no matter what's going on and what's happening. You know what's fascinating? Watch this. A chess player, if he says checkmate, and it in fact is not checkmate, the game will go on. However, if the player that accepts the checkmate from the other player and stands up and shakes the hand of the other player, even if it wasn't checkmate, then that player loses by default. In other words, he gave up and didn't even know it was a checkmate. You know the devil's banking on you just believing him that you're in checkmate. 
And if you give up and walk away, you will be in checkmate. But can I remind you today, the king has one more move. He's a step ahead of the devil. Every moment, every hour, every second. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot afford to take the devil at his word when he says checkmate. John 8 44 says, the devil is a liar and the father of it. Anything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. However, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If you've got the king on your side, he's always got one more move. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord today that the devil's been on you like white on rice and he's been trying to destroy your life but I've come to preach to you today that my king still has one more move I've still got one more opportunity one more move I can make and the king holds all the cards the king holds my beginning my ending, my future my past, my present one more move I'm not worried about the devil. I'm not worried about the eclipse. I'm not worried about China. I'm not worried about Russia. My king has one more move. Yeah. Woo. Please forgive me. I am just excited about what the king can do. You know what he does? He offers hope in a hopeless life. Daniel is now thrown into the lion's den. And the Bible says that the Lord shut the lion's mouth. You know what the nature of the lion is? I, I looked this up and of course we probably all know this. But lions will kill if the opportunity is there, even if they're not hungry at the time. It's their nature to kill. But the Bible says when Daniel got closed into the den of lions, but the Lord shut the lion's mouth because the king always holds one more move. You can be thrown into a pit of despair and despondency. You can be thrown into the adverse, adversest of situations. But I want to remind you that you are not alone and you're not all by yourself. The king is in the middle of it with you. And he still has one more move. Yeah. Yeah. Watch. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. The chess match ensues and checkmate was called out as they were thrown by the king of the world into the fire. But the king of kings had one more move. He, the Bible says uh, that when the king of the world looked into the fiery furnace, uh, he didn't see three men walking around. He saw four. You know what that tells me? That right in the middle of your most heated times of your life, uh, Jesus is going to jump right in the furnace with you. Uh, I don't care what you're going through. It makes no difference uh, because the king won't leave you alone. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you to the end of the world. If you get to the end of the world, he's going to be there. Now watch this. Uh, the Bible says the men that threw them into the fiery furnace burn up uh, from the flames that came out of the furnace. Uh, and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego are thrown in that furnace. Uh, and the Bible says they're walking around talking to God. You know, you can still talk to Jesus in the middle of all your troubles. Why? Because ain't nobody on the outside of that fire cared about them. But in the middle of the fire, you are the apple of his eye. You are the only thing he's come to save. You're the only thing that matters to him. Ladies and gentlemen, the king still has one more move. And he's going to make sure he saves his people. <laughs> and
And even the devil had to acknowledge, uh, man, who's down there with you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It looks like the, the fourth man has the image of the Son of God. Now, how would he know that? Uh, because the devil's already seen the Son of God. He knows what he looks like. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're not in this by yourself. Uh, there's a king uh, that's in it with you. Man, I feel the preacher in the house right now. God is trying to increase somebody's faith. You're never alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. The king has one more move. Watch this. Not only that, but while they were in the fire, the Bible says when they came out of the fire, not one hair was singed on their body. Their clothes weren't, weren't burned up. As a matter of fact, they get out of the fire. And that old king goes, Man, what cologne are you wearing? <laughs> the king couldn't even smell the fire on him. Now, we burn wood in the fireplace. I'm telling you what, if one little puff of smoke gets out, you're going to smell it through the whole house. You're going to smell it on your clothes. I walk out of the house, I'll come and say, man, you been still doing a fire? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. But the miracle was, is this, that no matter what you're going through, as long as the king's in the fire with you, he's got one more move. They can't touch you. I don't care what they bring against you. By the time it's all over, you're going to stand on the mountain saying, I am victorious through the blood of Jesus. He's got one more move. I'm going to give you a few names. And I don't know if I'll pronounce them right, so please forgive me. I tried to search. Nietzsche, Randy, Harris, Lennon, Stalin, Gervais, Carr, Dawkins, Heigl, and Bertrand Russell. What do all of these famous thinkers have in common? They all predicted or announced the death of God or Christianity. There's nothing new under the sun. For since the moment that Adam and Eve partook of the fruit... Our world has had those willing to stand up and declare some kind of victory. But such bold statements have never bothered the church nor Christianity. Why? Because the king ha always has one more move. Realities that affirm that we live in a dangerous world, that we are vulnerable, frail, and weak, and that we all die. Realities that also affirm the final judgment and an eternal afterlife. And yet such people, the people of God, are among the happiest and the healthiest of all people. They also tend to enjoy the longest lifespan and are less likely to flounder in destructive lifestyles than the general population that do not know God. Add to the fact that followers of Jesus Christ are among the world's most persecuted people or group. And one wonders how they even get out of bed in the morning faced with the same real everyday problems and every, that everybody else in the world and, 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 and then some. The Christian man and the Christian woman continues to stand and flourish. How is that possible? possible checkmate said the scribe and the pharisees uh, as they watched the body of jesus uh, be taken to a tomb i know it was all about last week in easter but i want to remind us one more time uh, the king of the jews breathes his last breath uh, and says it is finished uh, and they take him uh, just outside and they lay him in a borrowed tomb and the, you can hear the Pharisees jeer and all the Sadducees laugh and grin and look across the table at the king of kings and boldly proclaim chest checkmate but ladies and gentlemen there's one thing else they should have recognized first Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it 
they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. What they did not realize and understand was that the king still had one more move. If they would have understood what he was about to do, they would have never persecuted him. They would have never put him on the cross. They would have never put him in a tomb. But ladies and gentlemen, after three days, the king made the final death blow move that the enemy has ever seen. And he destroyed death, hell, and the grave because the king has won more move oh let me tell you because he lives we can live because he died you and I don't have to die because he was crucified we don't have to be crucified the king made one more move for you and for me in addition to human frailty we also affirm the reality of a God who always has one more move. A God who knows how to come back from the dead and he knows how to raise us up from the dead. This is why when sickness hits our body, you know, I, I, you know what I look at this as? You may like Monopoly. You like Monopoly? It takes forever to play. You better be in for a long season if you want to play Monopoly. When my kids take it seriously, especially Cameron. He's like the Monopoly champion. I look at this right here as my get out of jail card free. You know what I'm talking about? Free get out of jail card? If I've got sickness in my body, the king has one more move. Oh, you came too late to tell me he's not a miracle worker. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me just tell you for a moment. Let me gloat on God for a minute. Let me gloat on the king. You can't tell me he's not a miracle worker. I got, I got a little, little daughter-in-law over here that's about to give birth to my fourth grandbaby next month, and the devil said it ain't going to happen. God said it's not checkmate. I still got one more move. I know there's people in this room that you have battled with cancer, but you held up that one little check, check chest piece and you say God I know you've got one more move whatever you want to do I want you to move let me encourage you today if you've got cancer or sickness in your body I've still got the king on the board and the king still got one more move I don't have to go anywhere else I've got a God that gives me one more move I just don't know. I just don't know. Open your eyes right now. Oh my God, I'm going to destroy a good message I've been working on. But let me just tell you, when Elisha, when the, when the kings of Syria, you can be seated, when the king of Syria came, he sent over 50,000 soldiers. I'm ruining a good message I've been preparing. I'm telling you right now. But he had 50,000 soldiers that he sent to get one little prophet. Because every time that the Syrians will try to attack the children of Israel. The man of God, Elisha, would begin to tell the, 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 the king of, of Israel what they're going to do and exactly how they're going to do it. And so they would ambush them. And the Syria could not defeat Israel because the man of God. And the Bible says that the, the magicians and them came to the king of Syria. And said and they, he, the king said, how are they beating us? They said, it's because of one little prophet. That every time, every time that he opens his mouth, he tells them what you're saying in your bedchamber. You don't think God sees everything? So the Bible, the Bible says 50,000 soldiers, theologians believe it was up to 50,000 soldiers, walked over to the man of God's house. In this little valley, got 50,000 Syrian soldiers around this one little house to get one man. And the Bible says that Elisha came out of his house with his Starbucks coffee. No, don't say that part. Just as calm, cold, collected, he had his Krispy Kreme donut in his hand. 
He said, what are you boys after? We're after Elisha. Oh, yeah? And his little servant that he has is scared to death. Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Prophet Elisha said, don't worry about it, Lord. The Lord's going to take care of us. Because he's always got one more move. He said, you want me to take you all to where, who's responsible for all this? Well, I do, I do believe we want that. He looked at his servant. He said, Lord, I want you to open his eyes to show him that those with us are more than those against us. And the Bible says when the servant opened his eyes, he saw fires of fiery chariots all on the hillsides around them with innumerable numbers of angels all around because God's always got one more move. And then what happened? The Bible says that at a word, 50,000 Syrian soldiers were smitten with blindness. Preston, come here, would you? And the, the, Elisha, these guys are blind like, whoa, what's going on? What's happening? Their horses were probably blind too. I don't know. The Bible says Elisha took the king of the, of the Syrian army by the hand and led him back to Syria. 50,000 soldiers following one man, all these blind men, and brought them back into the king's palace, the king of Syria. He said, now, Lord, restore their eyes. And God opened their eyes. And he said, now, this is the reason why the problems are happening. It's your own fault. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you think for one second, no matter how many are against you, if you've got the king on your side, he's still got one more move. The enemy will tell you that in your situation and in the life that you're in, that there's a checkmate. You can literally see him smile in the dark side, feel his breath and even smell the bad breath of the enemy. As he gleefully says, you will never escape this. It's game over. As my son Spencer says, at the end of a Buckeye game, ball game. It's all over. Ball game. Win or lose, he says, ball game. And when the Buckeyes lose, we're like, be quiet, Spencer. <laughs> ball game. Checkmate. Can I remind you the one who has given up, the one who has given up on hope and feels all is lost. The king has one more move. But the doctors report. <laughs> Brother Lawson, take that other king. There you go. The doctors report says, and what do you say? Come on, stand with me, buddy. Stand with me. Hold that up there. You can hold it higher than I can. Goliath says the king's got one more move. Walk with me, brother. <clears throat> All over this place. But my kids are. But my marriage is. My family. <laughs> Can I remind you today? But my addiction. Oh, come on now. We can't be so starchy and stiff necked that we don't realize there are folks even sitting among us that have addictions. Some of us have addictions to Facebook. Oh, 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 ah. You ready for your Starbucks now? <laughs> Some of us can't do nothing without looking at Facebook unless we go, oh, I got Facebook. I got that, that withdrawal. I mean, you, you've heard me preach on it before. People, I, it even happens to me, the phantom buzz for our cell phones. I keep my cell phone usually in my front pocket, and if it's not there, sometimes I feel a little vibration there. 
It's a phantom vibration that we get because we're dependent upon it. Oh, now it's getting tight. If it's getting tight, it's right. Let me just tell you something right now. It might do us some good to set those things aside every once in a while and understand the king's got one more move. Because I'll tell you what happens on Facebook. Not everywhere. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But there's a lot of negativity and a lot of down stuff and a lot of stuff that will get you all kinds of out of your head if you let it. Uh, but you need to walk away from that stuff sometimes uh, and realize no matter what's going on in your life or their life, the king has one more move. Come on. If you got an addiction to pornography, you better understand something right now. 86% of all serial killers started off in pornography. It doesn't stop there. That's why you better understand the king still has one more move and God can deliver you from all of that junk. Come on, there's some times we need to shut off our Facebook. There's some times we need to turn down our computer. There's some times we have to turn off our televisions and say the king's got one more move. Don't tell me it doesn't affect them. By the time a child graduates from high school, they have seen about 150,000 murders on television. But Brother Heide, that's just acting. I don't care if it's acting. It gets in the mind of children and they start to understand, hey, this is the way of life. They start to feel like they're invincible, which is why they do what they do and they're above the law. And all these games, listen, I'm not that kind of a preacher. Please don't understand. This is the Holy Ghost talking right now. That we get in these games and we kill people and we get killed and we have another life. Listen, honey, it don't happen in real life like that you only get one life to live and you better please the king and allow the king to give you one more move oh my god my god my god the enemy is going to attack us. I'm, I'm getting very close. The enemy is going to attack us at every turn, especially in this last hour. Can I remind the church right now that we're living in the very last days? Uh, this thing is closing out. I don't care what Hollywood says. Makes, listen, Hollywood cannot dictate your Christianity. The Hollywood has no right to tell us how to be a good Christian and how not to. I don't look to Hollywood for Christianity. I look to the Word of God for Christianity. I don't look to my politicians. I look to the Bible. I look to my King. And the Bible talks about the enemy creeping up on us in this last hour. You feel it? There is an all-out assault. I talked about it last week. Talked about it on Wednesday. There is an all-out assault for your faith. The devil is going to try everything he can getting into your marriage, into your family, into your home, into your church. He's assaulting us and coming from every angle like a flood. But the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood the Lord still has one more move when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him can I remind the church that it's not by might and it's not by power but it's by my spirit says the Lord In this world that's so perverse and wicked, corruption has infiltrated every level of our lives. We don't know what to believe, what news to believe, fake news, bad news, indifferent news, true news. We don't know what to believe. Can I tell you the only thing that's permanent and lasting is Jesus Christ. Lift it with me, brother. Where two or three agrees to touching any one thing, it shall be done. I believe, I believe the king has one more move. And just when the church thinks that it's over, and everything is coming against us, you, you need to remember these words, please. I don't know what this world's about to face, but I do know this. We are going to be solid as long as we stay in Jesus. And things.
things are going to come against us. Even the Bible says forsake even mother and father. It doesn't mean that you forsake them. What it literally means is no matter what they tell you, understand that the only thing that's lasting is Christ. There are those with good intentions that would try to counsel us to walk away from the church or, oh, you really don't have to do that. I would like to know by what authority they tell you that because the Bible has everything wrapped up from beginning to end. It's all right there in your book and everything that it's ever said is true and come to pass and is about to come to pass. This world is on a collision course with judgment. Just when you think in the middle of all of it, because everywhere we turn, there's, there's liars, there's, there's looters, there's, and our nation is, a, is an entire mess. Uh, our nation is walking again, away from God's, God's people, Israel. We're walking away from the word of God. We're trying to tell people you can live however you want to live. Uh, listen, honey, I'm only going to tell you what the word of God says. Uh, you make your own decision. God is still in control. But at that moment, I want to remind the church of what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a oh, shout on. hold on just when you think the antichrist and the devil system is going to get his way the world is tumbling into a one world government we're walking into a one world currency where now even Elon Musk is putting chips in the brain of people and now over in, 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 over in the, the uh, area of Sweden uh, they now have chips in the right hand of people that they buy and sell about 5,000 people they're experimenting why the Bible said this was going to happen that there's going to be a mark in the right hand or in the forehead even in the middle of all of that uh, when it looks like the devil has us in checkmate uh, start over and read it again for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with a shout I just imagine that when the Lord descends from heaven with a shout uh, as the devil's crying checkmate uh, the Lord is going to do exactly what that one chess master did it's not over the king has one more move Read on, Pastor. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. I want to tell this world one thing right now and tell the church. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's going on outside. The king still has one more move. He's getting ready to come back after the church. And the Bible says the Lord is in control of it all. For the Lord himself. Oh my God, help me. There's not another person. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Preacher, don't get so excited. Hey, if he's going to shout, I'm going to shout. <laughs> I said, if he's going to shout, I'm going to shout. I'm going to tell you what, a rapture day, if you're going to be calm, cool, and collected, you ain't going to the same heaven I'm going to. Because, listen, I've told you this a million times, I'm afraid of heights. For the Lord to get this body out of here is going to be a major miracle. Because he's going to have to get me off the ground and get me flying up to the heavens. And you know what I'm going to be on that day? I ain't going to care. Oh, this is cool. Why? The king's got one more move. Be not, be, be, be not dismayed, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the king's not going to leave you in your dilemma. You're not going to die in your situation. He's always got one more move. Uh, and you can take him at his word. The Bible says at the very end here, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Uh, the king has the final say. Would you stand with me all over this place? Pressure from every direction. Colton, come here, would you? I want you guys to stand behind me and just hold up your king. Your one last move, hold it up. If your arm gets tired, switch hands, okay? Not each other's hands. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something that this church knows. I preached about this several years ago. Maranatha. You've heard the word Maranatha, it means Jesus is coming. I've heard the Maranatha singer, Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. I've heard the singers, uh, Pastor Beaver alluded to this the other night, I believe it was Wednesday night, we closed the service. The early church, 
to encourage one another. They'd walk up to each other when things were tough because they were persecuted. They'd just say, Maranatha, Jesus is coming. Oh, what a comfort. You say that now about Jesus coming, everybody's like flipping out. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to that day. Man, I don't need an airplane. I don't need a helicopter. I don't need a spaceship. I'm going to be an unidentified flying object. You hear about all this talk about UFOs? I'll tell you why. The devil's stirring that up for a reason. There's a way for him to explain it when the rapture happens. They got abducted. You're right. I won't get abducted, right? The king's coming back after me. See, some of you think this is goofy preaching. I'm telling you, this is exciting to me. But the early church will go up to say Maranatha to one another. As a matter of fact, they would do rapture ready tests. Brother JJ, would you come here and help me for a minute? I know he'll help me. Come on up here. Goliath number two. All right. And they would go up to people. I don't care if they had a sack of groceries in their hand. And when they said Maranatha, they would say, I'm rapture ready. And the early church would literally do this. They'd give, give God a chance to take it. Here, God will help you out. Maranatha. Rapture test. Maranatha. He's coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to meet him. Listen. I don't care how many houses you got. How much gold you got in your bank account what your last name is or who you're related to. It don't matter what your skin color is or what social status you come from. If you've been born again of water and spirit, the king has one more move for you. And the Bible says to comfort one another. If you're not rapture ready, you can be rapture ready today. Well, Pastor, what does that take? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you what the Apostle Peter said. And he's standing up with the 11. So all of the disciples and apostles were in agreement to the message Peter was about to preach. He said, repent. Acts 2 and 38 in your Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You want your sins remitted? Be baptized by immersion in Jesus' name. We know what remission is. We, we, we attribute that to cancer. When somebody's in cancer remission, that means the cancer is now gone, right? But we know sometimes in remission, cancer can come back. It's the same way with sin. If you're not careful, sin will come back. But you've got to be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not a multiplicity of ways. Ephesians 4 and 5 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not a multiplicity of ways. There's one God and Father of all, all verse 6. It was above all, through all, and in you all. So he said, Be baptized in Jesus' name for the for remission of sins, and you shall receive the, the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God wants to come live inside of you to give you resurrection power. So when we repent, we die out. When we get baptized, we're buried with Christ through baptism. And then when we come up, we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as they did on the day of Pentecost. We receive the spirit of life. So that's the death, burial, and resurrection. As Christ was, was, had died and was buried and resurrected, so you and I must, be, must die and be buried and be resurrected with him and have newness of life. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be rapture ready, you got to repent of your sins. Uh, you got to go down in Jesus' name. you got to get his spirit in you. I'm not telling you that as a judge I'm telling you that by the word the only way they were ever baptized was in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm so thankful the Bible says whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of Jesus and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all the king has the last move and then he says in verse 39 of Acts chapter 2 for this promise is unto you 
and to your children and to all those afar off. The same gospel message is to be preached to you and your children to all those afar off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So in this last hour, God is calling every person to repent. We need a national day of repentance in this nation. But more than that, you need it. And I need it personally to repent of our sins. Repentance means an about face. You do a 180. You were going one way, now you go the other. You do it, you might seek it with tears. But understand, Esau sought repentance bitterly with tears, but never found it because he refused to walk a different way. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to be Christian and called out ones, the Ecclesia, we're going to have to go a different direction. We were once walking by the world and with the world, but now we're going to walk with God and go the direction God wants us to go. We've got to lift up our voice and say, the King has one more move. He wants to move in your life right now. Would you give him the chance to give you one more move? We're going to open this altar. If you, I believe every person in this room needs to repent, myself included. We need to repent and ask God to forgive us. If there's anything we've done wrong, we need to ask God to help us. Come on, hold them up. Hold them high. The king has one more move in your life. You're not in this by yourself. He's going to walk with you every step of the way. One more move if you feel comfortable praying at your pew please pray every man woman boy and girl seek the king because he's got one more move for you the devil thought he had you but the devil's a liar the devil thought to tell you that it was all over but the king has one more move for you come on if you've repented of your sins it's time to be baptized in his name. Don't put it off. Today is a day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow.